Nothing like being locked up in a creepy castle. Salazar will be proud of this eerie establishment. The castle area in Resident Evil 8 is pretty interesting because it has a lot of triggers per se typically coupled with doorways. So what happens when we break said triggers? How does the game respond? Well, for one, half the map gets deleted. We have some interesting things to cover, so I hope you enjoy. And of course, if you do, subscribe to the channel. There's tons of amazing Resident Evil 8 videos coming soon, and you can always unsubscribe later if you lose interest. Alrighty. So Ethan picks himself up off the floor, and now we're free to wander the halls of this spooky establishment. But before we do, let's roll that beautiful footage. The amount of detail in each room within this castle is really impressive. It's a cinematic masterpiece, if I'm being honest. With each environment I see in the game, I just get more and more impressed. So of course, I took the camera for a spin for a bit. But when I was doing this, I noticed that while the rest of the level was unloaded, the Duke was still loaded in the background, despite being fully eclipsed in shadow. Kinda odd, but apparently he doesn't unload. When we go crawling through the fireplace, normally two rats run out in front of Ethan. And if we freeze their movement in place, we can actually see these two critters up close. And it turns out that as we progress, the Duke apparently does unload, but only right before you get to the room. If we take a peek in the room before he appears, the entire room is dark and dreary. The life is sucked out of it, to be honest. Of course, entering the room restores the Duke to his throne. And this is when I realized just how large this lad's head really was compared to Ethan. When you're playing through the demo portion of this area, lots of places are scrapped. Random rooms and areas you can't access because they don't actually exist. Exist. But up until we open the door with the ring's gemstone, not a lot happens. But let's change that, because we're about to get attacked by Lady of the Flies, but Ethan's got a secret weapon. And no, it's not a fly swatter, although that mod is super funny. No, Ethan's going to confuse her. So while Ethan's busy spitting flies out of his palm, our fly lady loads in but loses sight of Ethan immediately. Instead, she starts walking in place, aims towards the wall, and then explodes out of confusion. What's interesting is that the game's camera actually has an animated fly layer that plays over it, regardless of where the player is at. If we detach the camera from the player, we can see this in full effect. Anyways, so the fly lady is gone, but where did she go? Well, she doesn't know how to approach Ethan because we made it so she doesn't know where he is. So she does what she does best. She spawns in the ceiling with her feet sticking out of it. Nothing more terrifying than walking into a hallway and seeing a pair of heels above your head. Because she's clipping through the ceiling, her model is kind of in limbo. She's just sitting in the void and a cloth cape is floating around her. She tries to move, but she's ultimately stuck with no way to break free. And by holding her in place, we are able to enable a pretty crazy sequence break. So normally after running from her, Ethan is supposed to break through some boards and then fall into a hole. But because of our setup, and because certain parameters are lagging behind, the game doesn't check the trigger for actually falling down here correctly. So what exactly happens? Ethan does plummet down below, but only the outer shell of the map loads. So about 90% of the objects in this area fail to load. And this changes our entire dungeon experience. So Ethan's down in a room that's almost completely empty except for some floating buckets. Up ahead, Ethan normally has to climb through a tunnel that has Big Lady D on the other side. Yeah, I'm gonna call her that. Sitting in her giant glory, she's admiring a bottle of wine. This is what she looks like up close. The room is completely unloaded because of our skip earlier, so the room only has her and a barrel in it. While we're in here, let's see what happens when she goes through the door. It turns out that she just clips through a wall, steps out of bounds, and then instantly is turned off. The hallway in here actually comes to a dead end right around the bend too, so this door doesn't lead anywhere in the castle. Now, you'll notice that the barrel in this room has a hand sticking out of it with red painted fingernails. If we go inside the barrel though, you'll see that there isn't a body attached. In fact, the arm is severed and blackened on the stump. Kinda gruesome, but I guess making wine out of people is gruesome in its own right. As we press on, we are now entering the dungeon area, and this place is completely broken. Not only is everything unloaded, including the enemies, but the dungeon is missing parts of its geometry all over the place. You can see straight out into the skybox in many parts. The objects in the room still have collisions, so you have to walk around them. But we come to a dead end because the map itself is broken. Normally you come across a wall of junk and have to enter a cell. But the cell has an impassable barrier on it when the map isn't fully loaded. No matter how hard I try to get around this part, the game simply wouldn't let me. To be honest, I assumed that I wouldn't be able to proceed anyways up ahead, because the events that are supposed to happen probably wouldn't activate in this state. I did see two out-of-bounds lanterns though that the player could not get to or see normally, so that's kind of neat. But I couldn't do anything else, so I restarted from where I fell and pushed forward. Now Big Lady D's room was fully loaded, as were the other areas. Funny thing is that when she walks out of bounds, the leg cloth actually rips off her legs and reveals that there isn't anything underneath. 
You can see it if we stop time and move the camera over to our legs. Heading into the dungeon now that it is fully loaded, I waste no time as I charge with my shoddy in tow. I channel my inner Gears of War as I run up super close and blast each white knight before sprinting up the stairs. I somehow broke the trigger for the door though, and for some reason I could just walk right through it. So I collected my spoils and prepped for the second bug lady. Little did she know that I straight up soaked my body in deet. So as soon as she got within walking distance of smelling Ethan's musk, she exploded into flies. She could no longer detect Ethan's position again, so she decided to lock herself in a cage and run up against it while I made my way through the area. By the way, her pursuit animation is really, really creepy. They did an excellent job on this. I don't know how she becomes flies, but she gets an A plus for effort. Since she's locked in the cage, she can't really hurt us. Well, until we get to the end, of course. So in the demo version of the game, things normally cut off after you make it through the next room. But we can see that we're entering a butchery full of all sorts of meats. So because I made it to the end of the area and Lady Fly was still in the cage, I had trouble activating the wood breaking animation. Somehow my assailant escaped and got ahead of me. I couldn't open the stupid wood, so I had to batter away with my knife before I could make another attempt. Finally, the game let me activate the sequence, and with a mighty push, our adventure came to a close. The castle was broken, but we made it to the end of this part. So messing with Resident Evil 8 is a lot of fun, and a ton of time and effort went into this game. So of course, definitely give it a play if you haven't. And if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing, because you won't want to miss what is coming up next on Horoscoped. Cheers.